Hello everyone, this is Gary Ryan for the Feather League Flash for Saturday. And yes, wearing my Club 93 gear. Thank you so much, Ken. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little video for you guys later on. All right, um, doing a little different format today. I know the screen's all kind of weird and everything, but uh, yeah, this is on for a reason. Um, <laughs> so... Um, kind of need to stand up for this one. And I know uh, sometimes the board can be a little hard to see, so I thought, we'll try this and see how it works. All right, today I'm going to take a much early look at the Danbury Hat Tricks. Um, of course, last week I took a much too early look at the Mississippi Sea Wolves. And I know you're saying, well, if it's much too early, why are you doing it? Uh, the reason for this is being uh, basically... Uh, you're seeing on the transactions board for the Fed and everything, there's a lot of signings, there's a lot of additions, there's a lot of subtractions, there's a lot of trades, there's a lot of this and that. Um, but Mississippi and Danbury both uh, pretty much had their team ready to go for this upcoming year. Now, obviously, there's pieces that need to be filled in. There's... Uh, uh, you, you have some needs that still, you need to find out what's going on in camp, but for the most part, both Danbury and Mississippi got everything set. You know, 80% of the team is set. So uh, there's a lot of returnees. Uh, right now there's 26 players on the Danbury roster. 17 returning from last season. That is huge. Uh, so Danbury is looking to become the first repeat champion uh, in Fed history. Can they do it? It is possible. It is very likely. Um, now, the competition in the Empire Division this year is going to be overall better uh, than it was last year. However, um, the uh, Danbury's got their core group. Bill McCreary has done a wonderful job uh, as GM, team president, head coach, of establishing a, a standard before starting off. Um, his, his approach to the game is very unique, and uh, he's done a wonderful job of communicating, being able to communicate to uh, the players, uh, mainly through the on ice leadership of players like Johnny Ruiz and Kyle Gonzalez, what he expects, what he wants, how he wants the game to be played. And uh, so you know, he's got a culture already built in. It's not like you have to go in the camp and try and figure out um, team chemistry and all that. Um, I, I've got a, a, a possible lineup here. But the, the nice problem, if you want to call it a problem, that McCreary has is he's got so many parts that he can intermix and change and still get positive results because everybody is dialed in to the system and the vision that Bill has for the team. That was the biggest part of uh, how Danbury was able to succeed and win the cup this last year. Uh, yes, they had immensely talented players to boot, and that certainly helps. But when you have uh, a roadmap and a blueprint all set in stone and everybody on the team says, yes, I'm into this, you've already won half the battle. So Danbury, again, has that set for this upcoming year. So... You know, I, I think their odds of at least going deep in the playoffs, possibly winning another cup, is very good. Um, so we'll break it down a little bit. Um, now, last year, Danbury went 44-7-5, and 129 points, um, tremendous season. Then they get to the playoffs, and for the first time all year, they face adversity. They win the, the first playoff, playoff series easy as pie. And then to get to the point where they lifted the cup, they had to play and win five elimination games. 
and they did it. They won them all. Um, a lot of that is based on the culture that's there. A lot of that is based on the talent that is there. And now, a lot of that is also based on experience. So, uh, this is a, just a possibility as far as maybe some lineups, uh, some lines that uh, McCreary may feature. Obviously, he's got a nice problem. He can intermix these players and say, oh, you know, oh, I, you know, I want McKittrick on this line instead for today. See how it goes. And gets good results. All right, first line. Well, I, I think you have to start off with last year the best line was Marchesan. Uh, McKittrick, and DeBenedict. Now, DeBenedict is not returning. As a matter of fact, just to mention real quick, the players who are not coming back, uh, Lucas DeBenedict, um, hanging them up. Uh, you got Gordy Bennell, hanging them up. Riley Robertson yesterday signed a contract with Knoxville of the SP. So, you know, he may stick with the team all year. He may come back to Danbury at some point in time. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Dustin Gisseau only was with the team until early March, left the team, and uh, Binghamton's now got him. Um, Igor Borshev, uh, he signed with the Baton Rouge, or got picked up and signed with the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Same with Connor Woolley. Uh, Steve Leonard, he was in and out of the lineup, but spent most of the year at the SP um, and sometime in the ECHL because that's where his talent level is. Chances are he's probably not going to come back, but you never know. All right, so uh, that, that first line, uh, De Benedict's out. So uh, I think uh, slotting Jacob Ratcliffe in there is a perfect fit. Now, Ratcliffe uh, came on late in the year. He started off very slow, uh, but then the last couple of weeks of the regular season and in the playoffs – Played gangbusters. Um, here's a very tough line. You start off with uh, March Sand in the center, who was the playoff MVP. Uh, 34 goals and 58 points. Uh, McKittrick on the one side really didn't get started off well as he started off the year in Mississippi, got traded, and all of a sudden he found his game. Uh, 56 points in 54 games. Uh, Ratcliffe, in the time that he was in Danbury last year, Six goals, 13 points, and a plus 11. And he also chipped in 11 points on uh, during the playoffs, which was second most on the team. Um, so that's a great possible first line. Then second line, talking about the heart and soul of the team, the captain, the the, the assistant coach, the everything. Uh, he, he is Mr. Hattrick, Johnny Ruiz. Um, not only is he talented, but he's able to – be an, a leader both on and off the ice. Faced a lot of uh, injuries with his arm last year. Still managed to ring up 60 points in 46 games. Um, and the time that he wasn't on the ice, he was on the bench helping out Coach McCurry. Um, he was, you know, in, in his time on the ice, even if he wasn't anywhere near the puck, he, he just led with his presence uh, communicating with the team, uh, communicating with his line mates. Uh, you know, the leadership factor is off the charts. And uh, Johnny Ruiz is going to have a long, long career in uh, in hockey, even after he's done playing. Um, you got uh, pick up uh, from Delaware, Danny Gass uh, Gafferov. Be a great fit on Ruiz's uh, wing. Uh, 53 games played, uh, 51 points uh, for Delaware, and 176 shots generated, too. Uh, then you have Brendan Sheehan on the other wing, who ha he's played on Ruiz's wing before. Uh, Sheehan also plays a lot in the SP, but in the time that he is here in the Fed, uh, plays very well. He and Ruiz have a great chemistry together. Um, that would be a great fit. Uh, Sheehan, 29 games played, 36 points. Then you go to the third line. This is a real nice problem to have. Uh, you have a talent like Dmitry Kuznetsov, and he's might he might be your third best center. So, wow, you know, rags the riches. Um, Fifty games played, forty nine points, two hundred and eight shots generated. So, um, Kuznetsov is always involved in the play. 
Um, you got uh, Zach Pamelian who can play on the one wing. Uh, Pamelian's very speedy, uh, very uh, um, tenacious forechecker, uh, very uh, you know, very involved in the play, always engaged in the play. Um, yeah, he's a plus 28, 25 points in 46 games. Mike Falanja, who just came back, and that was by design, uh, let me tell you. Um, 40 games played, 23 points, but he does all those little things really well. Four checking, penalty kill, uh, just his speed, his play in the corners. Um, I, I can tell you that uh, one of the hardest things that McCurry had to do uh, this offseason season was you know the fact that he only had 14 players that he could protect uh, from the expansion draft, and he had to leave Flanja uh, exposed. And I can guarantee he went to Mike and said, "If there's any way I can get you back, I will." And he has. So then, you, then you have uh, additional talent: Corey Allen. You have da Daniel Ainsbury. Uh, you, know, you got the muscle. Uh, so that uh, other teams aren't taking advantage of players like uh, Marchesan and Ruiz and McKittrick. Um, you got Nick, Nick DeNicola coming back, the original hat trick. Um, scored the first hat trick for the hat tricks. Uh, yeah, he's back. You've got six rookies uh, fighting for a spot. And these are all just, they're not fringe players. They are good players, perform very well in Europe. It's going to be tough for them to crack the lineup, but they could. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, somehow, some way, <laughs> uh, seven players have to get cut before opening day. And uh, I can tell you that's going to be an agonizing decision for the coaching staff. Then you get to the defense. This was the core reason why I said Danbury's going to be fine next year. is because they protected all the defensive men. Now, Robertson has moved up to the SP, and those are big boots to fill. But I think they can go out, find an experienced, uh, solid defenseman, uh, one or two, uh, to step into his place. But otherwise, you've got the core there. you got Jared Yao, one of the most def the talented defensive men in the league. Um, you know, doesn't have the best numbers, but uh, just the way he plays the game, he Extremely talented guy. Very gifted. You got Kyle Gonzalez, who obviously, uh, along with Ruiz, is part of the leadership group. Um, chipping in 34 points, 31, uh, plus 31, uh, you know, leading the team. You got Brendan Dollar, who's been a solid uh, presence on the blue line. Jo John McDonald, who uh, can chip in a clutch goal here and there and still uh, be very defensively responsible. Uh, you got Xavier Abdella, who played half the year in the S SP, half the year here. Stay-at-home guy. Uh, I mean, this is a solid core that you got going. And then you got the goalies. You got all-world Brian Wilson, uh, probably the best goalie in, in, in the league last year. I mean, his numbers certainly say that. Um, consistency. Consistency, consistency. You got Frank uh, Frankie McClendon, who's been around for quite a while. Probably one of the best backups in the league. Um, you know, ten, 10 and two and a two point one nine goals against in the games he played. And you got Brandon Digg trying to make the roster. Um, a very talented guy out of Alvernia College. Uh, I, I mean, this team is stacked. So can they repeat? Yes, they can. Now, again, Elmira is going to be challenging for the division title this year. Watertown is a lot better. Binghamton is still a very tough team to play. So the competition level within the division is a lot harder. I don't think that Danbury is going to have the win-loss record that they did last year. However, uh, because it's more of a dogfight. But, however, I think that they have the tools and the... Uh, the environment in which to succeed to become the first repeat uh, champion in the Fed. So let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Keep in touch as I continue to put out these uh, these videos and tell a friend. Um, appreciate it. I'm Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash. Um, we will catch you again tomorrow with another video. Have a great weekend, guys.